I think you win the award for the youngest person ever on DevTools FM. So uh, congratulations for that. Uh, what made you like get into React and web development and led you towards Million.js? I started coding in fifth grade, um, not because I wanted to start coding. It was because I like playing cool math games um, on my <laughs> school computer. And, you know, like... I was like, I was hard grinding like Papa's Pizzeria. And so I was like obsessed with that game. But when my school district blocked like games, like flash games on their uh, computers, I was devastated. I was like, there's some way to bypass this, right? Turns out there is. Um, the, the thing about um, the, the, the blocking system was it, it only looked at like the URL on your website. And so I could have like an iframe embedded on like my own website and then it would literally, I would be able to play cool math games on there. And so from there, I just kind of dove into web development. I mean, I learned HTML. I know people say that's not a programming language, but it is a programming language um, and kind of dove in from there. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, so I remember when I started trying to learn programming, I, I didn't start with web development. I tried to learn C and C++ first, which was a mistake. Uh, for me, anyway, I didn't have a lot of great resources. But how was the learning path for you? Do, did you... Did you find it that you had like plenty of resources and getting started, there was like enough material or was it still kind of sparse and sort of hard to get started with? Definitely better than like maybe like 20 years ago. But um, I I feel like I have a very weird learning path or non-traditional. I think what most developers do is they either go through like a boot camp or they go through school or they learn, or at least in boot camps, you, you know, you learn React, you learn tools or in school, you learn the fundamentals first where people like, are just interested in getting like an O'Reilly C++ book and they learn um, like game dev or something. Um, but I kind of learned everything backwards. When I was talking to other pro programmers, they were using Git and I didn't even know how to commit in Git, <laughs> but I knew how to make a, you know, a website or library using JavaScript. Um, and so that was a definitely weird experience for me. I felt like I was learning everything backwards. Yeah, I, th I find it really cool that like your first delve into programming was hacking around your, your school's firewall with iframes. Excellent use of iframes. I don't know about other uses of iframes, but that's definitely a good one. Um, so what, le what led you to React? Uh, did you uh, try out other frameworks? Uh, how did you end up there? I was like big on not using frameworks um, because I thought they were too complicated. And so... I, I got into Vue by building my own Vue. So I like built Vue and then I learned how to use Vue like correctly. Um, and so I, I just kind of like played around there. Um, uh, and then one day I, I found out about this thing called the virtual DOM and I was like super hooked on it. Um, and so from there, I literally rebuilt React, kind of learned React. And from there, just now, now I do React it. Um, I, I found it interesting because it was really hard to wrap my head around the complexities of React. And the only way for me to really understand it was to kind of rebuild it myself. I find that true with a lot of coding things. You really have to get like down and into the code to really understand. Uh, so you said you were excited by the virtual DOM. I don't think many people uh, probably think that to themselves often. Uh, how, did you, how did you get to that excitement? Were you finding like performance pitfalls in your your home bake framework or did you just like the idea of, of what it entails? Both. Yeah, for sure. I, I was using like inner HTML calls. And if you know anything about that, like doing big HTML changes is like a terrible idea. And so that's where I, I, like, I was looking at virtual DOM and that was like a thing where I could actually, I mean, number one, I could take huge swaths of HTML and diff it against something and have it perform okay. But also it was just a really interesting concept learning about like, how to traverse a tree, um, how to build a tree, how to, you know, do efficient diffing and so, so that uh, things of the sort. Yeah, it is a pretty fun concept. I remember, I, I can't. I think I came to React mostly from jQuery, so <laughs> it was like a similar sort of thing, but different, right? You know, you're like editing a bunch of DOM nodes, and then you're like, okay, how do we do this faster? Uh, this kind of gets us into uh, thinking about Million. So, so you'd sort of rebuilt your own version of React to sort of learn the internals and, and started using React. And we're excited about the virtual DOM. Uh, what started making you think, hmm, this isn't exactly very performant, uh, or, or there could be more optimizations to how this happens? Yeah, I've always been pretty frustrated about how websites are built to date. Um, I grew up without a computer. And so I, and then the first computer I got was like 
insanely like it couldn't load wikipedia in you know in a good time and so i've always been on the the side of the of computing where it's like everything is really slow everything you know doesn't it's not state of the art my grandma even knows a 2015 ipad whenever i send her a tiktok it doesn't load and so i've always been frustrated with like the way we build websites now i mean um most developers have like an m1 macbook and that's great for them but obviously you know for users like me and a lot of users around the world, it kind of sucks. And so I was like, okay, what if we built a better virtual DOM? Like what if we could make React, but also make it many, many times faster? Um, and the way I approached this was, I, I already saw a lot of frameworks that tried to replace React and also touted performance, like Svelte, right? Like everyone knows Svelte. It's like way faster and also it's easier to use. Um, but I think the way I didn't, I didn't, I liked how Svelte was introduced a new concept, but I don't think it can make meaningful change without um, trying to get the current like React ecosystem to adopt something faster, right? <laughs> and so my approach with Million was, okay, what if we can make something really, really fast, but also allow current React users to use it? And so transitioning, you know, the status quo to something faster. So what, what, what are these performance uh, improvements? Uh, you said that the virtual DOM could be faster. How, how did you make it faster? Right. Um, the, the, the main thing I really focused on was reconciliation. Um, not because it's the most important necessarily. It's just something that was really accessible uh, for me to build. Um, the way it does it is through something called a block virtual DOM. So for context, a virtual DOM is something that allows like a framework like React to update the DOM or like to update UI. And so every time you make a component update, like a state change, that state change can be translated to real user interface changes. Um, the issue with the virtual DOM is it has to do something called the tree, like a diff, right? And so uh, a diff essentially comparing two trees of different UIs. So like you just imagine like a, you have your DOM nodes in a tree and you compare two different like states of it. Like maybe like one has the old content, one has the new content. And that's, okay, but once your tree gets really big, it kind of sucks. Like imagine your app being O of N, where N is the number of nodes in the tree. The block virtual DOM takes a different approach. Instead of treating the tree as something to diff against, it treats, treats the tree as like a template or like a, like a blueprint. And so it can figure out where the dynamic parts of the tree are. Like in your component, you don't have everything as dynamic stuff, right? It's there. Can, you can have like a static div and a static ID. Um, but what happens when there is a dynamic stuff? And so the block virtual DOM figures out where all the dynamic stuff are, skips the static content. And so it's like a direct update from your state to your UI. Right. So where a traditional uh, React would like diff every node regardless, it's just going to go through and diff everything. You've added an optimization to skip some nodes in this process and just like go directly to, you've changed this, this is dynamic, and I'll, I'll directly update the, the node that's associated with that. Exactly. So ha, like, how, how has this process been like trying to swap out the virtual DOM implementation for React? That seems like there's gonna be lots of pitfalls and lots of things that are kind of just hard to contend with since React wasn't built for this. Yeah, uh, frankly, it's a pain in the ass. React it makes it really uh, absurdly hard to, you know, work, like actually plug into internals. Like even any other library, like I don't even know, like Solid or Svelte, you could literally do what Million does much easier. Even like, it's almost like React is purposely preventing <laughs> like outside people to, to do things with it. But uh, it's been a, definitely a journey. Um, Frankly, we have we we have a solution that works. Um, it's not the best solution, but it's definitely not like super hacky. It do, does it does it like like what what are the limitations to it? Mm -hmm. So like uh, you you have both the concept of like wrap my whole app in as millions, and then wrap just subtrees of my app as millions. Like what's going to make me choose one or the other? Right. Um, the intended process, if you're using like our manual API is to wrap certain components you believe are slow or you measure are slow in terms of reconciliation. Um, there are pitfalls uh, in terms of our implementation. For example, if we encounter like a conditional render, like um, we expect components or blocks to be deterministic, meaning they return very stable JSX structures. So let's say you have an early return, like 
if you're the easiest example is like if you have like a query library, like React query. If your data isn't loaded, return null or like a loading state, or else returns your UI. Um, that won't work with us because that has like two branches, right? It could return two different types of UI. A lot of our other limitations are are fixed now since May of 2023, and we now recommend using automatic mode, which automatically determines how like when to use blocks and also um, sometimes can you know, optimize and allow you to optimize conditional components. That's cool. So what is the recommended approach? Do you, I mean, do you recommend people just use the automatic mode where it's just like you're kind of wrapping your whole app or, mm -hmm. or should they use manual? When do they choose, you know, which version? Yeah. For, for 99% of applications, it's um, the intended use of million is to provide free performance, right? Um, although like in some applications, it, doesn't matter. Like it probably won't make a significant difference. Um, it's our, our intention is to a lot. You know, you might as well use it, right? If it doesn't do anything, then it doesn't do anything. Um, for the five percent use case where you have like your your application is like solely focused on performance. Like you're building a, like you're at I don't know some stock trading company. You're building a very fast trading view. You're building for some reason you have ten thousand divs on the page or like those types of applications require some sort of manual intervention. Um, our APIs are pretty simple for that. Like you'll know when to use manual mode. Like, okay, my thing is slow. I need to customize this like granularly. Um, then you can use the thing. It's, um, we have a pretty good documentation in terms of how to use it and when to use it. Um, and so it shouldn't be too hard. So in those cases when you should use it, it's, do I have to like be very like specific of like, okay, I have this like long list it has a bunch of items in the list. They all return like uh, a, some HTML with a stable root. Uh, that's like, okay, starting to become like a millions thing that, that millions could solve. Yeah, exactly. Um, once you know, like, let's say you're on like low end device that, and then you see some like lag and it doesn't work. And at that case, it, it's a good idea to use million. So does this replace the need for virtualization or are you still, do you still recommend people virtualize even if they're using something like millions? It works tendentially with virtualization. Um, it's, I mean, it's, I think if you're not using virtualization, that's a problem. <laughs> so it, the idea is like, if you have virtualization, it's slow also, and then you should put million in because um, yeah, that, at that point it's a, like a DOM issue the way you can't conditionally return reminds me of solid like with solid it's like the same thing where you have like it, it looks like a, re a react component but if you do an early return that's an error right and it's funny because um i was on ryan carniatis which is creative solid stream uh, we were just talking about the similarities of million and solid's approach and it's actually really interesting um i i think the best way to think of it is million is like solid but without the signals part um, like everything else is conceptually the same thing. That's really interesting. I wonder if under, yeah, I wonder if under the hood, a lot of the performance impacts that, that solid has, which, you know, has been touted as a very performant framework. If it is like indeed, you know, done for the exact same reasons as like this, especially this like early return, not allowing that or, or make them requiring deterministic components. Right. I, yeah. There's always some limitations, unfortunately. Um, I do have some ideas around how to do it. It's just, it's a matter of time. <laughs>